And of course, that's when the bees and the wasps start to chip in to your day because they live outside, OK? So they'll start to come into your life. And you'll deal with the situation, I believe, as a British person, in one of three ways. Um, you'll recognise yourself in this as we go through it. When a bee or a wasp buzzes into your life, bzzz, either you are firstly a wafter, OK? You'll know who you are if you're the wafters. They're quite cool, by the way. If you're a wafter, you're quite cool. You just, bzzz, you just deal with the situation. Bzzz, OK, I'll figure. I don't need that. Bzzz, sure. Sure. Sometimes you don't even break stride in your conversations. So the other day we were, you've just dealt with the situation. <laughs> you're moving the air. Uh, you're not trying to hit it, I'm just going to move the air near you. <laughs> and you'll know that this isn't an area where you're particularly welcome, OK? <laughs> I'm a wafter. Right, next up, secondly, you have the stay stillers. Now, they are very serious people. <laughs> and they're very adamant that their strategy is the best one to deal with the situation. <laughs> OK, nobody move. Just stay completely still. <laughs> Don't make it angry. <laughs> Don't encourage it. They get quite angry with the wafters. Don't waft it. <laughs> You're just making it angry. You're encouraging it. Don't encourage it. It's not interested in us, and we're not interested in it. See? It's gone now. Just stay completely still, and it'll get about its business, OK? <laughs> then, the third way, the total panickers. Right? <laughs> Oh my god. Oh! Was it a hornet? Was it a hornet? <laughs> you know, if it gets you on the throat, you can die. You can die. <laughs> right? That's the third way. Now, wafters are able to upgrade and become total panickers. They allow themselves that privilege. You know? If things, zzz, if their wafting zzz, is ineffective and the wasp keeps coming back, zzz, then you can see them start to panic. <laughs> Which is why wafters really hardly ever get stung. And total panickers almost never get stung. You know who gets stung? The stay stillers. <laughs> because they cannot break out of their seriousness. <laughs> they are such firm believers that they have the right strategy. And this is why I thought of this. I've got a friend, he's a stay stiller, and a wasp not only buzzed around him, but landed on his face. <laughs> and he just went, the best thing to do is stay completely still. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. It's on your face. <laughs> I don't want to encourage it. But you're just encouraging it to crawl into your eye. It's walking towards your eye. He's like, no, the best thing to do... It's not interested in me. It seems pretty interested in you. <laughs> Why don't you waft it? The worst thing I could do is waft it. Just stay completely still. Then another one landed <laughs> on the other side of his face. I'm like, dude, you now have two wasps on your face. And then it stung him. I've got to say, it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Because he couldn't just scream. He had to make out that he was still in the right. And he just went... <laughs> it has now stung me. It stung my face. <laughs> it stung me on the face. But I think the best thing to do is to not encourage it to sting me again. <laughs> if a total panicker gets stung, you know about it. <laughs> Who's got children? Round of applause, you've got children. <laughs> there are basics that you have to do every single day when raising children, and these are feeding them. You have to feed them. This is probably news to nobody. You have to feed them. <laughs> you have to dress them. Okay? You have to wash them, and you have to put them to bed. You have to do these four things every single day. Now, every single day, each one of these things is a battle. <laughs> they are reluctant to do these things, and you are forced every day to compromise on each of them. I don't know why they resist these basic things. <laughs> every day is a battle. Just getting dressed. They will not get dressed. Put your clothes on. Put your pants on. They refuse to wear pants. I don't like pants. <laughs> They're uncomfortable. I don't like pants. Put your jumper on. I'm boiling. <laughs> I'm boiling. They're always boiling. I'm boiling. Yes, that's because 
I've heated the inside of the house, <laughs> what I haven't done is heated the rest of the world. <laughs> so you will need it when you get outside. Can I just take it? So you just compromise, all right, fine. Just take it. Do your laces, can I do it in the car? Fine, <laughs> do it in the car. Where's your bag? Where's your other shoe? And they spring things on you at the last minute. The other day we're going to school, we're nearly out the door. My son's done quite well, actually. He's got, his, he's got his pants on, he's even got his jumper on, he's holding his coat, he's got his bag. We're nearly out the door. He just looks at me and goes, Dad, it's Roman Day. <laughs> What's Roman Day? Everybody has to go to school today dressed as something from the Roman Empire. <laughs> I'm supposed to be at school in six minutes. <laughs> What exactly did you expect me to do at this point? Oh, yes, when I was nine, I was a centurion. I think I still have my armour here in the cupboard. <laughs> Let's not drive this morning. I've been hiding a horse and chariot in the garage. <laughs> I'll arrive in style. <laughs> Feeding. They will eat. Children will eat. They will eat rubbish. They'll eat garbage, OK? They'll eat chocolate and sweets and ice cream till they're sick. What they won't eat is things that are good for them. Every day we're trying to get them to eat vegetables, fruit, things that are good for them. We aim very high, my wife and I, every single mealtime. All right, tonight, there will be no ice cream, children, unless you have all your peas, all your broccoli and all your carrots. <laughs> but, Dad, please, it's disgusting. Please don't make me eat now. Please, it's just disgusting. Please, Dad, you can't force us. You can't force us. It's disgusting. All right, fine. <laughs> I just want you to eat one carrot, <laughs> five peas, <laughs> and this floret of broccoli. <laughs> but that is disgusting. Please don't meet me either. Please, you can't force me. I hate it. I hate it. I'm fine. <laughs> just stick out your tongue and let me wipe the broccoli across <laughs> your face. And then can I have ice cream? Yes. Washing every day, run the bath, get in the bath, have you washed? Have you brushed your teeth? They lie to you. They lie to my face every single day. Have you brushed your teeth? Yes. OK, then breathe on me. I have to get this jet of disgusting... <sighs> you haven't brushed your teeth, have you? No, I haven't, Daddy. Well, why didn't you say that? <laughs> the laziness. Oh, and flush the... You know... <laughs> Before I had children, I used to dream about what it was like. My wife and I would discuss it. I can't wait to have children. It's going to be amazing. You'll be such an amazing mom. I used to dream of idyllic, rosy-cheeked, beautiful children in dungarees, running in fields, picking flowers. Can we have our picnic now? Can we have our picnic? How did that fantasy become me, almost on a nightly basis, standing over the toilet, going, Whose poo is this? <laughs> Lucas, is that your poo? He puts on this whole facade. He actually comes over and looks <laughs> in the loo. No, that's not my poo. <laughs> so, Ozzy, it's your poo. Dad, that is definitely not my poo. <laughs> Darling, don't you even. <laughs> Oh, hair wash night. I don't know how much you're supposed to wash your children's hair, but I've got it down to about once a fortnight now because of their drama. <laughs> uh, hair wash night. No, Daddy, please. Can we do it tomorrow? Daddy, can we do it tomorrow? We do it tomorrow. Tell what's going to go in my eyes. It's going to go in my eyes. <laughs> Put your head back. You have to hold the flannel. They shake and the. <gasps> The shampoo actually goes a little bit in the eye. Why would you do that to me? <laughs> For God's sake, I'm just trying to wash your hair. Bedtime. Oh, bedtime. It's bedtime. Go to bed. Get, can I have a story? Can I have a story? The last thing you want to do at the end of a day of battles <laughs> is read a nonsense, stupid story. <laughs> I don't know if you do this, but I will scan the bookshelf for the shortest book that we own. <laughs> My son's always like, can we read The Hobbit? No. <laughs> I thought we could read this leaflet that came through the door. <laughs> 
for a local pizzeria. You see there's a deal on. Now, good night. Mm, Daddy loves it. <laughs> this is what it is like. It is a battle. It is a daily battle every single day to do the basics. There isn't a child on earth who has ever not battled these things. There's no kid in the history of children who's ever just gone, Mum, Dad, listen, I'm exhausted tonight. I'm just going <laughs> to head up to bed, I think. I managed to squeeze a shower in earlier, Mum, while you were cooking that amazing dinner. I don't know what you did with the broccoli. Was it something different? Because for me, it could have been a meal all unto itself. Magnificent. I didn't tell you guys it was Roman Day tomorrow because I wanted to surprise you with the outfit that I've made. You're going to love it. <laughs> I'll see you by the door at about uh, five to eight in my shoes and pants, and I'm going to wear my coat because you never know. I mean, it is quite chilly out. <laughs> oh, and uh, <sighs> minty fresh. <laughs> Well, that's never gonna happen. That's a fantasy. You won't even believe this. So in we go, through into the actual plane. Just, just check this out. I mean, this is, so this is an actual plane. We've probably all been in this situation before. There's always a little trouble as to find which is your seatbelt. <laughs> various seatbelts. Then I normally have to go all the way. I don't know about you, but I would take this. <laughs> With absolute maximum. And then give me a little bit of room. That pops in there, nice and relaxed. And then rude people, as soon as the sign's off, there's a boom, they will immediately recline. Ru you know who you are. <laughs> as soon as it's off, they'll just go, right, that's me. And the, just so you know, the person sitting behind you is staring at the back of your head, complaining to the whole room, look at this guy, look at this rude recliner. Because the more polite of us, and you also know who you are, and I count myself among them, well, you will do it in increments. Just every sort of ten minutes, I will slowly just move a little bit. And then there you are, after 40 to 50 minutes, and there behind you going, how the hell did he do that? Yes, that's the idea. Slow incremental reclining. Then you've got your blanket. If it gets chilly, shoes tend to go off. Always a little bit embarrassing. So they always say, leave your seatbelt on. They say, leave it on in case of turbulence. So you have to leave your seatbelt on. Then the blanket goes there. Then you, then you try and sleep. But then sometimes the stewardess, there's turbulence. The stewardess comes around. She, said, she goes, excuse me, sir, is the seatbelt on? And it's a very awkward moment when you have to lift <laughs> and direct her. Yes. <laughs> Very awkward moment, I'm sure we've all been through. So you've got all the things here, the armrests move, the tray comes down, we've even got food here, which we can go through, which is absolutely revolting. We've got the hardest, the hardest <laughs> bread you'll ever get in the world. And then, of course, they come down and they go, would you like the chicken or the fish? Chicken or the fish, sir? We've got chicken or fish? Then you go, oh, I think I'll have the chicken. They go, we're out of chicken. <laughs> All right, that's where I'm from the chicken. So, as you all know, to, to, for takeoff, they always tell you to put the blind up. They go, make sure... Sometimes you're about to take off, everything's fine, and they go, excuse me, sir, could you just pop your blind up? We need all the blinds up for takeoff. Really? This blind is linked to the engine of the plane, is it? <laughs> is the captain up there going, something seems to be wrong. Have you checked all the, all the blinds? Have you checked all the blinds? 32B, check with 32B. All right, whoa! Oh, well, that's better! Close one. <laughs> All right, so this is where he'll come. <laughs> All right. That's another thing that happens, is when, the, when it ends, when the plane... Because it's a race, isn't it, to get off the plane? It's a race. You pretend you're not racing, don't you? You look around. As soon as you get there, you're looking around. They always go, welcome to such and such. You've arrived. Please wait for the seatbelt sign to go off. But everybody is waiting. They might as well say, on your marks, get sent, go. 